Hi, I'm Konstantin Riebel. Welcome to the second episode of the Large Scale Scrum Principles Explained series. In this video, we will cover the systems thinking principle. Every one of us is part of a system, actually multiple systems. For example, our families, the communities we live in, the organizations we work at. Since LESS is about organizational design for large-scale adaptive development, we will focus on organizations as a system. In small organizations, the forces at play are seen quicker and they are informally understood, meaning the cause-effect relations about how the organization works are more visible and easier to grasp. But in large product development or any large system, it's much more difficult to see those cause-effect relations and much more difficult to understand the entire system. Gerald Weinberg highlighted two decisive factors in this context. More software projects have gone awry from managements taking action based on incorrect system models than for all other causes combined. And the causation fallacy. Every cause has an effect and you can tell which is which. Problems stemming from mental models and assumptions are one issue. Another issue is that for a company to truly become adaptive, it involves more than just doing agile processes in the development group. Becoming adaptive involves product management, budgeting, HR policies, purchasing, sales after sales, customer service, and so on. It involves the entire organization. The MIT Sloan School professor Jay Forrester conducted a research where decision makers were giving dynamic models of a business system and they were asked to improve the output performance of this business system. The results showed that they actually made it run worse. The observation was that most people have weak judgment on how to fundamentally improve systems. People usually applied or typically applied common sense solutions and quick fix solutions that do not create long lasting improvement. The question is, why is the behavior of large systems, such as a development group, not understood? Most systems of interest, like organizations that develop products, have positive and negative feedback loops, as well as non-linear behavior. And it's exactly this non-linear behavior that defies our gut instinct. Then there's also the issue of people. It's like Magnus Westin once said, all organizations are rational until you put people in. In summary, we can boil it down to a few reasons for not being skillful in interpreting or guiding big systems. One, lack of knowledge about the system dynamics, about the feedback loops, about the nonlinear behavior in the system, and unintended consequences in a workplace system. Two, not understanding root causes of problems and how to find them. And I would like to point out it's causes in plural, not singular. Because in system thinking, one says that there are multiple indirect and dynamic causes to problems. And three, not knowing if or why quick fix solutions or local department decisions degraded overall delivery performance. Most people have the education and the skill to master the complexity of static details. However, seeing the dynamics of large systems involves the analysis of the complexity of dynamics. The problem is that most of the people don't have any formal education in analyzing dynamics complexity. And this is even more true for the workplace dynamics. Maybe it's because people believe that it's enough and sufficient to rely on common sense in the workplace. But remember, Forrester showed that common sense is not reliable in complex or dynamic systems. Luckily, he also showed that it is possible to formally educate people in becoming better system dynamics thinkers. How? By using models visualized in flow diagrams. We, and by we I mean people who are interested in LESS, usually use causal loop diagrams to visualize system dynamics. And the first law of diagramming is... We model to have a conversation. When a group of people gets together to sketch a causal loop diagram on a whiteboard, the primary value they get is the conversation they have with each other and the shared understanding they arrive at while creating the model. It is essential to visualize the people's ideas and knowledge of the system dynamics as an easy to understand and unambiguous diagram. And still, the diagram as such is secondary to what people take away, which is learning and the revised understanding through the discussion they have. 
You can find an in-depth introduction to system thinking with causal loop modeling on less that works, under principles, and then system thinking. To summarize, system thinking is a really helpful reasoning tool. Therefore, when a company goes through a large-scale agile adoption, it is really, really helpful when colleagues get together and effectively reason about the organization as a whole system, considering mental models of the system, causal relations of causes and effects, feedback loops and control mechanisms. Thank you for watching. If the video was valuable to you, please click the like button. To stay in touch, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button to get notified about new content.